We're going to add API key authentication to a minimal API endpoint. In this application that I've got, I receive a webhook whenever someone unsubscribes to my newsletter. I want to make sure that I only get webhook requests from the newsletter provider. One way I can do that is to get them to send over an API key as part of the request header. Then I can authenticate it in the application by looking at the API key that is saved in app settings. I specified this API key that I'm going to authenticate against. And no, it's not the one I'm going to use in production because you all know what it is. I've created this API options class and it's going to store the key within that. So it's going to replicate what's in here. We need to bind that though so we can use it in our ASP.NET Core web API. And to do that, we call builder.services, we call add options, we pass in the class as the generic type, then we need to bind it to our app settings. So it's within the API section, so that's what we specify. With the configuration setup, I want to make sure that the API key request header exists and that it matches what's in app settings. If it doesn't, the authentication needs to fail. Before we have a look at that, remember to subscribe to the channel and leave a like for the video. We need to create an authentication handler class that inherits this class. This provides us with the handle authenticate async method. We need to populate that. But first of all, we need to inject the API options that we set up previously. So we're going to store that in a private read only variable. We'll call the I options monitor. We'll pass in API options as the generic type and we'll call it underscore API options. We'll then pass that in as a parameter as part of the constructor and then we'll set it inside there. Now we want to do some checks. So we want to make sure that the request header has the API hyphen key header as part of the request. If it doesn't, then we need to fail the authentication. So we do that by calling request.headers and we try to get the value. Now the key is called API hyphen key and we want to output it to a variable called API key header. But if we can't get a value, we need to fail the authentication. And we do that by calling return task from result and we call authentication result dot fail and we can supply an error message saying the API key is missing. After that, we want to check to see if the API key in the request matches the one that we've got in our config. And that's quite simple. We've got the API key header as part of the request. We can say if it doesn't match what we've got in API options dot current value dot key. Once again, we'll fail the request. We'll give a different error message. We'll say invalid API key. At this point, we know that the authentication has passed. So we need to set up a new identity for it. So we create a new claims identity. And within that, we'll create a new claim. We'll specify a name of it. And that's going to be the scheme name. Now the scheme name is something that we've just set up here and we've just called it API key. Then we can return the result that it's successful. So we call authenticate results.success. And within that, we need to create a new authentication ticket with a new claims principle. We pass in the identity that we've created here as part of that. And we're also going to specify that it's come from the API key scheme. Eagle-eyed viewers would have realized that I missed something out when writing that code. I need to add a comma there so it actually compiles. With that set up, I need to configure it in program.cs. The first thing I need to do is to add a policy. So I call builder.services, I add authorization, and I need to specify some options. It's within those options where I can add a policy. So I call options.add policy. I'm going to call it API key policy. Now for this to work, I need to add an authentication scheme. So I call policy.add authentication schemes. If we go back to the authentication handler. I've given it a scheme name of API key. So that's what I'm going to set up as the authentication scheme. So I call API key authentication handler and then the scheme name like that. And I also need to specify that I require an authenticated user as part of this policy. With that bit done and then need to add the authentication. So I call builder.services, I call add authentication, 
and then I add a scheme, the authentication scheme options I need to pass through. And I need to specify that I'm getting it from the API key authentication handler. So that's how that matches up to this authentication handler. And then within that, I need to once again specify the scheme name for it. And I don't need any additional options, so I can pass through null for that. I've got this minimal API endpoint. In order to authenticate it, I need to call require authorization and I need to specify the policy name, which is API key policy. So this will match the API key policy up here. The authentication scheme is the one in the API key authentication handler and it requires an authenticated user. And the scheme name matches up there, which matches up with the authentication handler that we wrote earlier. Shortly, we'll run that endpoint to check that it authenticates correctly. Before we do that, I want to add some breakpoints into the authentication handler to make sure that it's going through it properly. Let's now test it. So we're not going to add an API key to the request header. So it's going through our authentication handler. It's seeing if there's an API hyphen key request in the header. Can't find it, so it's going to fail the authentication. And it's returned a 401 response. Let's now specify an API key in the request header. But we're just going to put any value in there. So it passes the first check, but it doesn't match what's in app settings.json. So it's going to fail the authentication and return a 401 response. Let's now put the right API key in the request header. So to do that, because I don't remember what the value is, I need to copy and paste it from app settings.development.json. I really ought to remember what that value is. But let's try it out anyways. So yeah, it's still going through the authentication handler and it's passed. It's returned a 200 response and also our hello world response. You can add API key authentication to your web API when you download the code example at roundthecode.com slash examples. There's also a link for it in the YouTube video description. If you're a bit like me, I can be a little bit forgetful and forget to add authentication to my API endpoints. But you can be extra safe and add a fallback policy, which will require authentication for all your endpoints. Back in program.cs, we've added a fallback policy. We've only got one authentication scheme, which is the API key authentication handler. So that's our fallback scheme. We specified that it needs an authenticated user before we build it. We've created a new endpoint. So it's this endpoint route. We haven't specified require authorization, but it should still need authorization because we specified a fallback policy. Let's see if that's the case. So we've run that endpoint and it's returned a 401 unauthorized response. Let's now specify that API key header. So we've specified the API key header in there and it's returning a 200 response. The problem with the fallback policy is that it will authenticate against all requests. This will present a problem if you've got API documentation that you need to keep open. Personally, I'll be explicit as to which web API endpoints need authenticating even if you are a little bit forgetful, but that's down to you. You can watch this video next to see what else I learned about minimal APIs. To download the code example for this tutorial, you can go to roundthecode.com slash examples. There's also a link for it in the YouTube video description. Leave any comments that you have about authentication and I'll see you on the next video.